Hello, I'm Adam, hailing from parts fun known, and this is how Adam would book Kurt Angle's illegitimate son. So it's no secret that Kurt Angle's my favorite wrestler of all time, and well, he sure is up for some stuff, huh? That's always been one of the Olympic hero's greatest strengths, the ability to bench any ego that his amateur credentials might have given him and throw himself balls first into just about anything. Smooching an unconscious woman, check. Wearing a tiny cowboy hat, check. Talking about wanting to have bestiality sex with Booker T's, what? Oh. It seems that as long as you ask nicely, Kurt Angle will do anything you ask of him, and that includes fabricating a f***ing child. In May 2017, Kurt Angle began to receive text messages. Angle responded with, well, it could ruin me, and worried that his family was going to leave him. A few weeks later, he told a mysterious person over the phone to join him on Raw, and that will tell the whole world together. I love you. Most people thought a fair and started shipping the monstrous idea of Kurt Angle and Stephanie McMahon. Picture that at Titan Towers, a shaking bed frame, Kurt's glassy expression, Steph screeching until birds fall from the sky. Anyway, most people also thought it could be an illegitimate child. Maybe it would be Corey Graves. Maybe it would be Chad Gable. After all, Gable wore singlets similar to Kurt Angle. Gable acted in a manner of an endearing dork like Kurt Angle. Gable wrestled in the Olympics like Kurt Angle and incorporated a lot of amateur technique into his wrestling like Kurt f***ing Angle. And hey, it turned out to be a member of American Alpha, trombone noise. Now, to be fair, Jason Jordan also incorporated a lot of amateur technique in his wrestling and was... Well, he was bald. Anyway, that didn't stop the internet from bursting into laughter and retweeting the family song, My Black Son on Mass. Side note, on the 27th of December, 2016 episode of SmackDown Live, American Alpha won the SmackDown Tag Team Championships and the camera cut to a African-American man celebrating in the crowd. That man was Jason Jordan's real father. Must have been a fun time for that guy, huh? Hey neighbor, how's your son doing in his wrestling? Why are you crying? So it was a very silly storyline, ludicrous, cheap, Easy, unbelievable, and somehow boring. Like there was no montages of father-son bonding, no odd couple comedy, and they didn't even reveal who it was that was sending the text to Kurt and Corey to begin with. Like, like you don't have to do it seriously, WWE. We know it's not real. Pairing that hyper unreality with ridiculously high personal and emotional stakes creates a situation that's ultimately silly and comedic. Why wouldn't you lean into that? Especially with Kurt wore a fake wig under his wrestling headgear and drowned himself in milk at his own Hall of Fame ceremony angle. Fans turned on Jordan. And his whole bland, I'm Kurt's son, but enough about that flavorless shtick. It, it didn't work. To WWE's credit, they eventually cottoned on to the fact that fans hated Jordan, you know, even going so far as to have Triple H pedigree him in order to forcibly remove him from the main event of Survivor Series. Yeah, WWE seemed to be saying, we've made a huge mistake. But after that, the character of Jason Jordan finally began to click. He became more whiny, more dorky, and started to glomp onto the shield because they were cooler than him. Senpai Watash Nikitsuite. When Dean Ambrose went down with a shoulder injury, Jordan and Shieldmate Rollins won the tag straps on Christmas Day, and everything sort of seemed to be basically Jordan versus Rollins or Jordan versus Angle at Mania, and it was working. Fans would cheer Rollins, boo Jason Jordan, and the way that they were presenting Angle Jordan Junior, that seemed to be the plan. Whenever Jordan would take the microphone, the fans would hurl abuse at him and he would respond with incredulous confusion. Why are you booing me? I'm Kurt Angle's black son. Sadly, injury then struck shortly thereafter and Jordan was waylaid in order to have neck surgery, which was ironically the most Kurt Angle thing he ever did. He never actually came back and now works for WWE as a producer, which, you know, Great, I hope he has a long career ahead of him. However, even if Jordan had stayed healthy, it would be hard to argue that The Illegitimate Son was a success. It was a very silly thing in a much more straight-faced era of wrestling, and WWE's unwillingness to embrace how bananas of an idea it was of Angle fathering a current generation wrestler. Well, let me have a go. First things first, Jason Jordan is out. Now this is not meant as a mark of disrespect to Jordan, but WWE have a bad habit of trying to swim up the logical stream like a bad idea, Sam, and doing the wrong thing for the sake of unpredictability. Most of the time the obvious call is the right one. That's why NXT works. And the obvious call in this case is 
Chad Gable. Gable, he's so many things, and all of those things work for him. He's competed in the Olympics. His diminutive stature belies a startlingly powerful and complex moveset. He's a dork, and I mean this in a positive way, game recognized game. Unlike Jordan, whose real life dorkiness arose from his shaky confidence on the mic, Gable is great at performing a dorky character. So the storyline starts the same way. Corey Graves and Kurt Angle have been receiving text messages from a mysterious person who is threatening to expose Kurt Angle's big secret unless he does it himself. Kurt comes down to the ring and says, I've got a little boy. He's a little wrestle boy. Like his old man, he represented his country at the Olympic Games and now he works for WWE. Can you believe it? No, it's Chad Gable. Kurt's bastard seed. Gable walks down and they hug. Chad claims that he always wanted to tell Kurt who he was but never did because he wanted to succeed on his own merits. Like you did, pops. Well, Kurt responds, it's not too late and if you'll let me be your daddy, I'm ready, willing, and Gable, they both shout at the same time before hugging. Look, either make it stupid or don't do it at all. Oh, don't do it at all. No, no, we're, in, we're into it now. For the next few weeks, Stephanie McMahon is forced to return on camera because Kurt has taken an extended paternity leave in order to pursue what he calls daddy time. Every week on Raw for the next month, WWE airs a different daddy time vignette which shows Angle and Gable dork bonding. These segments include a segment where Kurt and Chad sit around playing father and son by Cat Stevens on dueling pianos, both of them wearing cowboy hats that are slightly too small for them. Gable and Angle playing catch together. Kurt makes his son run long and claps his hands and laughs every time Gable makes a perfect catch. That's my Olympic boy! They enjoy a wholesome, all-American picnic, apple pies, hot dogs, and gigantic glasses of milk. Gable and Angle go fishing together on a tiny little boat. Gable ends up catching a big fish. Kurt Angle catches a little fish. They, they laugh and they hug. Gable and Angle training together at the gym, spotting each other, beaming with pride as they pump iron. Gable offers to lock up with Angle, but Kurt refuses, claiming he's retired from all of that. This is important. A few weeks before SummerSlam, Chad Gable is invited onto Miss TV and he shows up wearing a t-shirt that says, Kurt Angle's my daddy on it. Immediately, Miz accuses Gable of exploiting Kurt to further his own career. He said, Angle's been smacked on the head so many times, he's got no idea where he is, never mind who's his son. At this, Gable launches himself at the Miz, defending his father's honor by suplexing Miz into the Miz to us. Backstage, Gable approaches his father, still steaming about that no good bully Miz. He has a pitch for SummerSlam. He wants to team with his father to take on Miz in the Miz Tourage three on two. He's glomping onto Kurt now. Senpai wa tashni kitsuye te kudasai. Angle refuses, stating that his days of wrestling are behind him, but he tells Gable, to worry. He'll find Gable some partners to take on Miz and Miz Taraj. Similar to real life, Gable teams with the Hardys to take on Miz and Co in a six-man tag match at SummerSlam. Now, the match takes place on the kickoff show, yes, and ends with a victory for Team Gable. However, with the match airing on the pre-show, during the main SummerSlam show, WWE play a brief recap of it, followed by a backstage interview with Chad Gable, who expresses remorse he couldn't have teamed with his dad that would have made the main show. After SummerSlam, Miz continues to sound off about Gable, calling him a fraud, riding his daddy's coattails. On Raw, during another of the daddy time vignettes, this time with both men chopping wood on a farm, Gable pitches to Kurt that he makes an intercontinental championship match for No Mercy, Gable versus Miz. That'll shut the Miz up for good, ha huh, pops. I'm starting to go a bit Jimmy Stewart with it now. Angle agrees, they hug, and it cuts to them sitting in front of a fireplace drinking milk from whiskey glasses. At no mercy, Gable battles Miz for his IC title and it looks like Chad has the A-lister's number. The skull-crushing finale gets reversed into an angle slam and even locks Miz in an ankle lock. However, the numbers game of the Miztourage is too much to overcome. Bo Dallas distracts the ref, whilst Curtis Axel clocks Gable with the belt, leaving him vulnerable for the skull-crushing finale. Miz retains the championship. On Raw, during another vignette of daddy time, this time Angle and Gable are playing with model trains wearing comically oversized train conductor's hat. Chad asks Kurt to make another match between him and Miz, this time at TLC. Now, Kurt is unsure at this point. He agrees that the Miztourage were out of line, but he's got a whole roster to think of, and maybe someone else should get a crack at the title. For the first time, Gable lays a guilt trip 
on his new dad, saying, Oh, jeez, Pops, I just wanted to make you proud of me, that's all. Tie a lasso around the moon and pull it down. I just wanted to win a title like you did so you'd respect me, but I guess you don't, huh? Eyes brimming with tears, Kurt makes the match at TLC. They hug, choo-choo, Pops. Choo choo. Come the pay per view, Miz has to pull out every trick he's got in order to stave off Gable. He brings the Intercontinental Championship belt into the ring and makes out as if he's going to hit Gable with it, but then he throws the belt to one side as the referee's getting distracted, getting the belt out of the ring. Miz nails Chad with a massive kick to the dick and rolls him up for the one, two, three. Now the bell rings, but as Miz is celebrating on the ramp, Gable gets on the microphone and calls his dad out to ringside. Dad! Kurt Angle comes out and Gable complains that Miz cheated, asking his pops if he's gonna let him get away with that on his show. Angle restarts the match and shortly thereafter, Gable nails Miz with a top rope angle slam for the pinfall win. He's won the Intercontinental Championship, although the commentators note he had to use his daddy in order to do it. Now, if Gable's behavior is starting to rub you up the wrong way, good. Side note, a lot of you will be asking, what does all this mean for the TLC main event, which in real life was a ginormous, wonderful, sort of hot mess of Rollins, Ambrose and Angle versus Miz, The Bar, Braun Strowman and Kane? Just remembering that match gives me a nosebleed. Well, a couple of things. Obviously, Miz is no longer in that match, and I would keep Kane out of it as well. That way, with Roman forced to sit out of a Shield reunion thanks to an ill-timed case of the naughty mumps, it's Ambrose and Rollins versus Braun Strowman and The Bar. So it's two on three. Remove Kurt Angle from that match and save his return to the ring for another better story. My story. Now, don't get me wrong, that weird Frankenstein's monster was a hell of a match, but it was also such a confusing, convoluted mess, and like, Looking back on it, WWE lost that special moment when Angle had to single it up for the first time and take care of business in a story that meant something to him. So, Chad Gable is the Intercontinental Champion. He's starting to get a little bit more egotistical about it in interviews. He claims that gold runs through his veins. And when asked if he thinks he'd still be champion without the involvement of his father, Gable gets mega pissy and storms out. I'm a wrestler, it's England. We're fast approaching Survivor Series, which means that suddenly all storylines are put on hold until a grand winner is decided in the all of a sudden incredibly important war between SmackDown and Raw that has absolutely no tangible stakes, nothing to win or lose, and is very quickly forgotten about once the pay-per-view is over. Good times under siege trademark. Once again, it's similar to how they handled it in real life, with a few very important differences. Keep the Raw vs Smackdown 5-on-5 five five elimination main event, but again, remove Kurt Angle. This time, replace him with Chad Gable. In the build-up to the event, Triple H makes his return, tells Kurt that he's inserting himself into the main event, along with Balor, Samoa Joe, and Braun Strowman. He then tells Angle, I want you to be the fifth man. Naturally, the crowd are going crazy as they're still aching for Kurt's return to the ring. However, Angle wants more refuses. He apologizes to the crowd, but he's adamant he is done with laying hands in the ring. The crowd is in luck, though, because Angle's got the perfect replacement, his son, Chad Gable. By this point, the crowd should be really starting to turn on the wee lad and putting him in the Survivor Series match instead of Angle will only help that along. Now, at the pay-per-view Survivor Series, Chad Gable is immediately eliminated from the match by a Kinshasa from Nakamura. Literally, he lasts less than a minute. However, because Raw still wins that match as it did in real life, Gable claims that victory for his own in backstage interviews. Team Raw won, so I won too. Why is that so hard for everyone to understand? Then it comes time for the Royal Rumble and Gable approaches Angle backstage and tries to apply pressure on him in order to make him the number 30 entrant. Angle doesn't think that's a good idea, as it might be construed as daddy favoritism. After all, didn't Gable say way back when that he didn't want any special treatment? In response, Gable whines, pulls on his bollocks, mopes about how he grew up without a dad to play catch with, and that Angle missed out on his entire childhood, and now that Kurt's got the perfect opportunity to make up for all those missed birthdays, he's refusing to take it. Wow! Angle once again feels insanely guilty and acquiesces, giving Gable the number 30 spot in the Royal Rumble. However, he also makes a match lower on the card for Gable to defend his Intercontinental Championship against The Miz, who never got his one-on-one -on -one rematch. When Gable starts to complain, Kurt places an arm around him. Hey, we're champions in this family, aren't we? Gold runs through our veins. Remember King of the Ring 2001? I wrestled three matches that night. I know you'll make me proud. At the pay-per-view, 
It's a shit night for Chad Gable. First, The Miz reverses an angle slam into a skull-crushing finale to win back the IC title absolutely clean, no discussion. Then, later in the night, Gable enters the Rumble in the number 30 spot and is immediately eliminated by Jason Jordan, who entered at 29 instead of Goldust. Sorry, Goldust. Backstage on Raw, the next night Gable is in a foul mood and barges into his father's office. He threatens to quit right there on the spot unless his dad tells him that he's in the Elimination Chamber match to determine who will fight Brock at Mania. So Kurt makes a match for him. Chad Gable versus John Cena for the right to enter the chamber. John Cena isn't who I wanted, Dad. Jeez, you don't know me at all. Gable Bello storming out of the room, putting on his tie-dye t-shirt and listening to Nirvana. Later on in the night, Cena defeats Gable in a surprisingly evenly balanced match. Side note, it's important to get the balance right here. Now, I've handed Gable a handful of quick losses, sure, but it's only when he's being entitled and egotistical and trying to take a shortcut and should hopefully be more of an indicator that he needs to get over himself and not that he's crap in the ring. To write the balance, a match like Cena Gable should go a good 15 minutes in order to remind everyone that Gable is really talented, even if he is also a really bell end. After failing to qualify for the chamber, he's interviewed about it backstage and all he says is, it wasn't supposed to happen this way for walking off. So Gable's out of the chamber match. Miz is in, so at the pay-per-view, Gable doesn't even get a shot at the Intercontinental Championship. He doesn't know what his plans are for that pay-per-view, so he tries to see his father, but he's informed that Kurt is busy working with Ronda Rousey's agent, hammering out her contract. Gable is really pissed off at this, and it keeps happening over the next few weeks. Every time he wants to see his father, he's told that Angle is busy preparing for the big contract signing at Elimination Chamber. When that pay-per-view does come around, it's time for the pomp and circumstance contract signing. We begin with Kurt Angle in the ring. However, before he's able to introduce Ronda Rousey, he's interrupted by Chad Gable, who's out to do what he does best, and that's A, piss, and B, moan. He rails on his father for ignoring the fact that he was ever even born, and now you're ignoring me on the road to WrestleMania? I am your son! He shouts, I'm your little Chaddykins, and I'm not even on the card. Kurt tries to placate Gable, but after some more grade A whinging, he finally snaps, shouting at Chad, go to your locker room. Pouting like a child, Gable complies, and the signing can carry on as it did in real life, except with a slight downplaying of the tension between Angle and Triple H, because that's not where Kurt is heading. Instead, it's Ronda Rousey versus Stephanie McMahon. That would be nice. The next night on Raw, Chad Gable goes down to the ring wearing a suit. He asks his dad to come down to the ring as well. Angle's music hits and the two men stand in the ring together, father and son. Both of them start to apologize at the same time. Look, no, you go first. No, I, I'm sorry, because ultimately they're a pair of dorks. Gable apologizes to Kurt for his recent behavior. He's let ambition get the better of him, but only because he wanted Angle to be proud of him. Kurt replies that he was always gonna be proud of his boy, no matter what. No matter what, asks Gable. No matter what, replies Angle. The two men hug before Gable twists slightly, delivering an angle slam to Kerr. He mounts him and starts punching him over and over and over again in the head. He rolls out the ring, picks up a chair, and delivers a second angle slam onto the steel and wants to beat down as finished. Gable picks up the microphone and says, Are you really that stupid? I was never your son. Oh my goodness. Oh my damn. Because, yeah, whoever you choose for this angle can't be Kurt Angle's actual son forever. That's a gimmick that won't get over. So it's all a ruse. Next week, it's revealed in an interview that Chad Gable faked the whole thing to advance his career. He was the one who texted Graves and Angle threatened to out the whole thing. He knew that he'd lived a life that bore a lot of similarity to Kurt Angle's. He knew that the internet constantly compared American Alpha to the world's greatest tag team. And he knew that Kurt was going soft and sentimental in his old age. He saw an opening and he exploited it. He freely admits to guilting Angle in order to receive opportunities. But recently, he noticed that the whole father and son angle had outlived its usefulness. So Gable says, well, if he's only got one chance left to make himself into the superstar he knows he deserves to be, he's gonna take it, and that's to beat Kurt Angle at WrestleMania. He turns to the camera and issues a challenge to Angle for a one-on-one -on -one match. Angle refuses. While he is disgusted with what Gable's put him through, he's not gonna give him what he wants. He doesn't wear a singlet anymore, he wears a suit. That all changes when Chad Gable goes after Kurt's actual 
family. Kerr Angle is in the ring on Raw, running down a match that he's making for the main event, when suddenly, Chad Gable appears on the Titantron. He's outside Kurt Angle's family home, recording himself on a video camera. He knocks on the door, and Kurt's wife answers, to whom Gable says, hey, you must be my mother-in-law, before pushing his way into the house. Chad walks into Angle's home and starts smashing pictures of Kurt Angle with his actual family, all as his kids scream and his wife cries. Oh, I love it. He promises he's going to visit again unless Kurt gives him what he wants. At this point, Kurt Angle loses his goddamn mind and announces one more match, just one, his final match at WrestleMania. A farewell to Kurt Angle, and he is going to destroy Chad Gable. In the build-up to Mania, Gable comes down to the ring, accompanied by security guards for protection in order to brag about what he's done. He calls Kurt Angle down to the ring, and when he arrives in a suit, he mocks him for his age, tells him that he's a shadow of his former self. He's a suit, not a wrestler. After he beats him, Chad Gable's gonna be WWE's new Olympic hero. Kurt Angle replies by reaching into his shirt, pulling out his gold medals and saying, hey kid, here's mine, where are yours? Bringing up the fact that Gable didn't actually make the podium at the Olympics infuriates him, and he instructs his security team to escort Angle out of the ring. Then after an almost full year of wondering when Kurt Angle was going to get physical, after a year of him refusing to get back in the squared circle, it happens. Backed into a corner, Kurt starts busting out moves like it's the old days, destroying Gable's entourage with bellies to bellies, German suplexes, Angle slams. He finally unleashes the Olympic wrestling machine we knew was in there. Angle rips off his suit jacket and his shirt to reveal a wrestling singlet underneath. Gable manages to get out of Dodge before suffering the same fate, but suddenly we see in his eyes, oh, I have done fed up here. Gable, says Kurt, I may not be your father, but at WrestleMania, I'll be your daddy. At WrestleMania, Kurt faces off against Gable with both men nailing each other with the best of Kurt Angle's repertoire. After a hard fought match, Chad Gable hits Angle with a top rope angle slam and pins him in the middle of the ring because yes I know, Kurt Angle is my favorite wrestler of all time, but ultimately, Chad Gable is who this story is about. Making something for Chad Gable that isn't shorty goddamn King G, I went the entire video without talking about it. Why have you dressed one of your best guys like a high school student in a public awareness advert where a coach uses basketball as a metaphor to talk about smoking, you heartless motherfucking monsters? Anyway, this is how I would do it. That's how Kurt Angle would probably want it to end, going out on a loss, making a new superstar. And this way, it sort of makes sense. Like, yeah. Of course, someone on their WWE roster isn't actually Kurt Angle's son, but maybe Kurt Angle could believe it, thinking about his retirement, thinking about his legacy, and someone might exploit that for their own dastardly ends. And then you've given someone all that heat of a ridiculous storyline, you've lent into it a little bit, you've tried to exploit it for all its most comedic and potentially serious consequences, and then it's gone, and you've got a brand new top tier heel on your roster. Someone you can take a little seriously. Shorty, go I can't, I can't, I can't, and I won't. Anyway, that is how Adam would book Kurt Angle's illegitimate son. What else would you like me to book? Let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe and check out all our other videos on Parts Fun Known.